or you don't. You believe in him or you don't. But this is one of the most influential man in history. I'm talking about Prophet Muhammad and I want to speak about one particular most fascinating event from his illustrious life, which actually marked one of the most crucial milestones in modern history. Here is 621. The Prophet narrates, It was night time when I was in the sacred mosque in Mecca. I was presented a vehicle called Burak, which is the Arabic word for the energy of a lightning bolt. So Burak means lightning in Arabic, and Burak is the energy contained in a lightning bolt which is approximately 1 to 10 billion joules. That's a lot of energy. So the speed of a regular lightning bolt is 97,536 kilometers per second. The Prophet in his first part of this journey traveled from Mecca to Jerusalem. And the distance between Mecca and Jerusalem is 1,486 kilometers. By a little bit of math, we can find that for someone who's traveling at such a speed, the distance of 1,486 kilometers can be covered in precisely 0.01 second, a centisecond, a hundredth of a second. But we are not just talking about near light speed travel from one location to another. No, we are talking about travel to a parallel universe altogether. That's what this journey is all about. Because the Prophet does not visit Jerusalem the way it was at that time. That's the key point here. He visits Jerusalem the way it is in a parallel universe. Yes. In his time, Jerusalem was a deserted dump yard. Uh, there was no structure there because the masjid was completely destroyed by the Romans. So clearly, this is travel to a parallel universe, especially looking at the energy used here, meaning the energy of the Burak, which is 1 to 10 billion joules. And the energy required to travel to a parallel universe is what is called the Planck energy, which is also 1 to 2 billion joules. So that is a beautiful coincidence there. The, co the Prophet's night journey is all about travel to the parallel universes. Einstein's time dilation also plays a part, meaning time slows down when you move at high speeds and hence you go into the future. Also quantum probability. See, quantum mechanics says that at the fundamental level, the universe exists as an ocean of probabilities. Meaning, a particle, the most basic part of the universe, could be in various different locations at the same time. But it is conscious observation that puts it in a particular place, thereby creating a version of reality, as opposed to other versions. But that's exactly what's happening throughout the journey of the Prophet. He is presented with different options, and his choice of one option, one probabilistic option, over another creates a reality and changes the course of history altogether. The Quran throughout emphasizes on the existence of parallel universes, meaning existence of parallel realities or dimensions of time and space that possess different probabilities of the same phenomenon. Meaning, remember how um, quantum mechanics says that a conscious observer affects reality by collapsing the wave function? Similarly, there exist different versions of the same thing in different multiverses. These multiverses could exist side by side or doors to enter into another uh, parallel universe could be all around us. We wouldn't just know. It sounds like sci-fi, but it is an inevitable conclusion of string theory. And there is sharp mathematics to it. But for us, what matters is that the Quran is absolutely clear on it, that multiverses exist. So along with the multiverse theory, Einstein's time dilation and quantum probability, we will encounter black hole physics when discussing the second part of the Prophet's journey. So to start with, the Prophet's journey can be divided into two parts. 
Isra being the first part from Mecca to Jerusalem, or more precisely, the Prophet's travel to Jerusalem as it exists in a parallel universe. So the first part called Isra is a parallel universe travel corresponding to the world. The second part of the journey is even more exciting as it involves the collapse of a star and the formation of an infinite gravitational field also called a black hole. Then the Prophet witnesses a timeless, dimensionless realm which in scientific terms is called a singularity. He sees future events on crossing the event horizon, witnesses the quantum probabilistic nature of the universe meaning that the universe at the quantum level is just a collection of infinite possibilities. And on his return, he describes the Milky Way with amazing precision. When he returns to his room, the latch on his door is still oscillating and the bed is still warm, exactly the way he had left it. So this is a case of extreme time dilation meaning time literally stopped for him. Okay, now let's get a physicist in. And just for you to know, I've studied advanced physics, so I really know what I'm talking about. But anyways, we'll get the physicist in and narrate to him the entire event. So we're talking about traveling to parallel universes, going into the future, reaching a dimensionless, timeless realm, and back. In a moment. Multiverse refers to the general idea that our universe might not be unique. There might be many, many universes. And there are a number of different ways of thinking about multiverses. Now this idea of a multiverse is not gratuitous um, speculation. No, it, it really comes out of both experiment or observational physics about the universe and the current theories as best we understand them. I think we've got to be open-minded because we have good theories which predict that the multiverse must exist. And so maybe if you could have this, these parallel realities, you could then uh, have this uh, uh, unrestricted time travel with free will. So just to summarize then, before I, I take uh, uh, some questions, um, uh, time travel, fact or fiction? Well, travel into the future, definitely fact. We've done it, not a problem, only a problem of dollars. Uh, to do it uh, by more dramatic amounts. Traveling back into the past, very problematic, and the dollars here are much bigger because if you want a wormhole or you want to pluck out space-time film or something, uh, you're in for a big budget. 